Good morning, and welcome to Perth Andover Baptist Church on this beautiful Mother's Day morning. Um, as we gathered, we recognize the mothers who are here, and we also recognize those who uh, could not, whose mothers are not with them and, and the pain that they feel. But I also want to point out that there's a lot of other mothers here who really don't know that they're a mother, and they're the people who nurture and care for us as a church family, for each one of us, and I want to um, say a thank you to them as well. As we start the service, I want to share a few words from Psalm 36. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies, your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the deep, the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the refuge in the shadow of your wings. Thank you for your love and compassion. And thank you that we can gather together to celebrate and praise you for your love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. On this happy Mother's Day, we're going to start by praising the Lord with a new song that uh, Nathan and I introduced a few weeks ago, so it's praise. So I'll invite you to stand. This is one where you can feel free to clap along with me, uh, dance along if you want to, but sing along if you know it. And uh, yeah, let's praise the Lord together this morning. Got the clap first. So one, two. Three. I'll praise in the valley, I'll praise on the mountain, I'll praise when I'm sure, and praise when I'm doubting, I'll praise when I'm numbered, and praise when surrounded, cause praise is the water, my
getting back there in time. <laughs> Sorry, we're discussing if he's going to get back there in time. Nathan's playing double duty today. He's on tech and worship. So I'm going to invite you to stand. We are going to do a children's song because it fits with our message today. We're reflecting a lot today on God's love and Christ's love and how um, our mothers, when they're being awesome mothers, are reflecting God's love to us. So um, we're going to do a song. Actually, Marianne excitedly introduced the actions to you a week, a couple weeks ago. So hopefully you remember some of them. So it is, wait, your love never fails. It never gives up. I think our actions in the video are slightly different. The video, and then it never runs out on me. I think it's maybe ever so slightly different in the, this kid's video, but you can do Marianne's actions if you prefer those two, whichever one you feel like doing. So let's stand for our children's song.
morning and happy Mother's Day. We will start with uh, taking collection. And for those that don't give online, so we'll just do a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that we have and the many blessings that are bestowed upon us. We give a small portion of what you have so graciously given to us back to the work for your kingdom here on earth. Amen. So before I start with announcements, do you want to do, do a collection for us? Um, who's behind you? Oh, I've lost his name. Dean, you good? <laughs> um, anniversaries this week, Marianne and David Bell have an anniversary today. Happy anniversary. Saturday, May 18th. Uh, Anna V. Adams and Travis Crabb both have birthdays, so happy birthday to them. For church activities this week, Sheila's group meets Monday uh, at noon at the church. My group meets at 10 a.m. at the church at 7 o'clock. Youth group for grades 5, that's grade 5 and up, is this Monday, May 13th from 6.30 to 8.00. The prayer walk happens every Tuesday at 1.30 at the RVCC uh, parking lot. Pastor Nathan's study, The Soul of Shame, is Tuesday, May 14th at 7. Men's coffee hour is this Wednesday at 10 at the church. And there's a deacon's meeting Thursday, May 16th at 7 o'clock, just to be aware of. So there is some things that are coming up. It's in your church bulletin. Uh, you can just look at that. Uh, this song, though, did remind me a whole lot of, uh, of VBS. So VBS is coming up quickly, and uh, it'll be another fun time, too. So just a little update on what's happening at Shiktahawk at our, with our cabin. We now have all the paneling up on the walls to the main cabin. And for those of us that grew up with paneling, the word paneling is horrible, but this is a nice paneling. It's the white-gray and the big thing is that we'll be able to wipe it down, and it looks really good. And we have the molding up around the ceiling on that. So the floors will start to be laid this week. Uh, we're putting in a, a vinyl waterproof click flooring. And so we hope to get the flooring done in both the, the main cabin and the counselor's room. We didn't have enough uh, money slash paneling to do the, the uh, counselor's room this year, so we'll probably do that in paneling next year. Uh, left to be done is some work, some painting work that the ladies will do, but also um, we hope to get the air conditioner uh, finished around it and around the window. So we've put in a new window and a new air conditioner, new to us, uh, that works. So we're pretty excited about that, and I'm sure the kids will be too. They'll have an air conditioner in the cabin, so that'll be nice on those hot nights. Okay, that's it. Good morning. <clears throat> I'll just draw your attention also to the financial update that's on the back cover of the bulletin. That's um, a new thing that you might not notice otherwise. So that's for the month of April. So we're going to go to God in prayer now and ask him to help us with our many things. Um, we're particularly going to pray for some people who are sick. Kelsey's out of the hospital, but we want to continue praying for her. Tammy's sister, uh, Tammy Bragdon's sister, is really sick, and Anita's brother-in-law is unwell. There are people grieving. Anita's um, lost a family member. So let's go to God in, uh, in prayer with all these things. Our loving God, we thank you so much for the many things that we enjoy, especially at this time of year. We thank you for the lovely weather today and other days. We thank you for the spring and the colors and the new growth and the signs of life. We thank you for the lovely display of Northern Lights over the last few nights. We just thank you so much for this beautiful world you've created for us, and we thank you. We bring before you so many needs, Father, in our hearts and in our, our community and in our congregation. We pray specifically for some of the people um, attached to our church who are unwell. We think about Kelsey, and we thank you that she's home from the hospital. And we pray that you would continue to help her to heal and regain full strength and good health. We pray for Tammy's sister, who's seriously ill. And we just pray for you to be uh, near to all of the people in that family. And we pray that you will um, reduce the pain and the um, stress for this family. We just, we just ask that you would walk with them in this difficult time. We pray for Anita's brother-in-law. 
We thank you that he's able to get good treatment, but we just pray for him too. We just pray for all of those, Father, in our families and in our church and in our community who are undergoing treatment for disease. Um, we pray for those who are waiting for treatment or waiting for appointments. We just look forward to the day when we will have perfect bodies um, in the life ahead. We pray for those who are grieving. We think of Anita and her family, and we pray for others. We pray for our church ministries. Father, we thank you for all the work that's been gone on, going on at Camp Shiktahawk and for all the people who have been down there working away to make our cabin um, a much better place for campers. We just pray that you would bless all the work of Shiktahawk, all the decisions that they make as they prepare for a new summer. And um, we pray that you will bless, bless, um, bless them as they hire camp counselors and that they, as they do their recruitment for campers. We just pray for your blessing on that camp. We pray for all our ministries here, our children's ministries and youth and all the different groups for adults. We want so much to be, Father, a church that is doing what you want us to be doing and we just pray that you will lead and direct and bless what we're um, engaged in now and steer us in the right direction. We pray for our pastors, Pastor Nathan and Pastor Sheila. We ask you to bless them with great health and enthusiasm and wisdom and the ability to do what you've called them to do. We pray for the other churches in our denomination, in our convention, and in our community as they try to follow you. We want you to shine your light in this community through the different churches, and we pray that you will bless. We pray for our community, Perth Andover and Southern Victoria and Topic First Nation. We pray for all government leaders at all levels from municipal, provincial, federal. Father, we see so much trouble all around the world, great suffering and oppression, and we pray for peace. And Father, today on Mother's Day, we thank you for all those who provide loving care to others. And you understand the many feelings that people in this church are experiencing today on Mother's Day. Thankfulness, sorrow, concern, longing, regret, and many other feelings. We pray that you would draw near to each heart, speak to each one of us in this service, soften our hearts so that we can hear from you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was preparing for this sermon today, I get thinking of mothers, and um, there's a quote that I read uh, by Marion Garrity, and it says, a mother's love is the fuel that enables a Norman, normal human being to do the impossible. And today is Mother's Day, a day we celebrate our mothers. When I think of mothers, my first thought and description of mothers is a heart of love. And today I'll be talking about love, not only from mothers, but from fathers, grandparents, siblings, aunts, uncles, friends, church family members, and all the other people who nurture us. And I'll reference a mother's love, but recognize that others may be providing that kind of love in your life. Now, have you ever stopped to think about the depth and the significance of your mother's love? From the unconditional nature of her care to the sacrificial acts she performs, a mother's love holds a special place in our hearts. The Bible has much to say about a mother's heart of love, and they use that analogy to present the truth about God's heart of love. I would rephrase Mary and Garrity's quote to say, God's love is the fuel that enables a normal human being to do the impossible. When speaking about love, 
my first thought goes to the passage in 1 Corinthians 13, known by, to many as the love chapter. Um, I know you hear this read at weddings and, and things like that, but it speaks to us as Christians. The importance of sharing Christian love and the need to be kept, it has to be kept front and center in our daily lives as we follow Jesus, as we care for each other, and as we serve our community. May we be a community of love. Let's look at the first seven verses of 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered or keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. <clears throat> Sorry. As Paul points out to the Christians in Corinth, this was written to, at the start of the chapter, supreme elegance with words, superior knowledge and faith, and ultimate self-sacrifice are all worthless if we don't show love. How can mere mortals accomplish this love? We have the perfect example. Jesus, the one who walked on this earth, who spoke perfectly, who had prophetic powers, he had all knowledge and faith, who even offered up a body of self-sacrifice is the answer to where we find our love. He did all these things and many more in love. The Bible provides many beautiful descriptions of maternal and paternal love that can also provide a depiction of God's love for his children. A mother's love, a father's love, can sustain us just as we are without changing and, we can, and can help us move forward with self-confidence. The same is true about God's love. So let's look at the types of love that were described here. And the first one I want to point out is unconditional love. Keeps no record of wrong. Human love is often so conditional. Sadly, that's the way it is in many homes. In our hearts, we may believe that our love is unconditional, but the message that it's given is usually that of conditional love. In a book called Living God's Love, author Douglas Cooper says, the average person is programmed from birth to love only conditionally. And I thought, I don't agree. <laughs> but consequently, we grow up feeling that we have to earn any love we get, earn it by our good behavior, by agreeing to let someone else have their way, by giving someone what they want, or simply by being nice. If Cooper was right when he says the average person is programmed from birth to love conditionally, an impression is built within us that we must please our parents, our friends, in order to receive love. And then we naturally start to expect others to please us if they want our love. Therefore, with this deep-seated attitude, it becomes humanly impossible to love anyone who disagrees with us. It's impossible to love anyone who believes differently. Just look at the political debates. It's impossible to love anyone who acts differently from the way we think we should. Social media is full of people attacking those who believe differently than they do. As humans, our concept of love can be conditional. Note I said can, it doesn't have to be. 
and we have many examples of when it is not conditional. So when God says, I love you, what naturally goes to your mind? We think, well, I need to please God in order to receive his love. What do I have to change? How do we try to please God? Well, some of us try to follow the Ten Commandments. We try to give an offering. We try to make, be more healthy with our diet. We try all these things. Subconsciously, some of us believe that when we please God, he will love us more. That is not true. No, it's not true. God's love is not conditional like some human love is. Fortunately, all human love is not conditional. A parent's love can be a beautiful example of unconditional love. In the book of Isaiah, there's a passage that beautifully illustrates the depth of a mother's love. Isaiah 49, 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget. The passage speaks of a love so natural and strong that it's unfathomable for a mother to forget her nursing child. The verse captures the essence of unconditional love, which knows no boundaries or conditions. In this passage, the author paints a picture of nurturing mother who cherishes her child with a love that's unbreakable and unwavering. It depicts a love so intrinsic to a mother's heart that it seems impossible for her to ever abandon or forsake her little ones. Most mothers I've encountered feel this kind of love. In this biblical context, the mother's love becomes an allegory of God's love for humanity. The verse extends beyond the realm of human capacity for love and reveals God's relentless and his unconditional love for us. It demonstrates that just as a mother cannot forget her child, God cannot forget or forsake his people. The protection we get from this unconditional love helps us to grow up with an emotional safety. My parents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, my siblings, and my church family provided me with unconditional love. They may not have agreed with all my choices in life, especially as a teenager, but they still loved me. The imagery used in, a, in Isaiah 49, 15 evokes a sense of awe and wonder, making us reflect on the profound depth of unconditional love. It reminds us that even in our darkest moments, when we feel abandoned or forgotten, God's love remains steadfast and unchanging. So whether you're a mother, yourself, or someone who has experienced the unwavering love of a mother in your life, Isaiah 49, 15 serves as a powerful reminder of the boundless and the unconditional love that exists in this world. Now, the question I have is, do we offer that same boundless and unconditional love toward God? Do we express unconditional love to the members of our church family? 1 Peter 4, 8 reminds us, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. May we at PABC follow Jesus with unconditional love as we care for each other and as we serve our community. Remember the new commandment Jesus gave to his disciples in John 13, 34, and 35? A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. May we love one another unconditionally. Another side of a love um, is a comforting love. In the passage in Isaiah, introduces this comforting love. In Isaiah 66, 13, we find a beautiful portrayal of the comforting nature of a mother's love. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. Now, this verse uses the tender relationship between a mother and her child to illustrate how God provides comforts to his people. Just as a mother lovingly cradles her child, 
offering solace and reassurance, God's love is comparable to a mother's love in providing comfort and healing. My mother cut an article out of the Telegraph Journal many years ago, and she placed it in a scrapbook. And I have a picture here of that article that she, and listen to the words. I have often wondered why there's such a bond between a mother and her child. A mother's love is special in so many ways that nothing can compare with the unique mother-child relationships. Perhaps the loving attachment between a mother and a child is due to the wonderful pregnancy experience. For nine months, two people are living as one. Perhaps that bond is formed at birth, when a child seems to know instinctively who its mother is and who will care for it. The amazing thing about motherhood is that it makes no difference if a mother has one child or ten. They all are equally loved in a special way. From the days of baby bottles and changing diapers to school plays and graduations, a mother is fervently loyal and loving to her child. Our Lord Jesus had a wonderful mother who was chosen especially for him by our Heavenly Father, and our Heavenly Father also chose our mothers for us. A loving, compassionate mother is truly a blessing from God. And Isaiah 66, 13 highlights the soothing touch of a mother, emphasizes her role as a source of comfort and peace, and it reflects the compassion and nurturing instincts that mothers naturally possess, which are reflective of God's inherent love for his children. Like a mother's love, God's love is not only unconditional, but it's also comforting, offering solace and reassurance even in times of difficulty or distress. The image of a mother's comforting love evokes feelings of warmth, safety, and protection. It reminds us that even amidst life's challenges, we can find comfort in the embrace of God's love. His love is a shelter that brings peace to our heart and eases our burdens. The verse from Isaiah invites us to experience a comforting love of God, just as a child finds solace in the arms of a caring mother. It reassures us that no matter what trials we face, God's love is there to comfort and heal our hearts. Isaiah 66, 13 reminds us of the profound impact a mother's comforting love can have on our lives. It points to the immeasurable depth of God's love, which surpasses even the most nurturing and comforting love we have experienced on earth. As a child and as an adult, my mother was always there to listen to my disappointments, my fears, and my upset. And I miss that empathetic ear. My mother was a comforter, not only to the nine of us, but also to other family members and friends. Once, when my parents were in, on vacation in Ottawa visiting family, I started to experience a difficulty in a pregnancy. I didn't want to call her because I didn't want to interrupt their visit. The next evening, they arrived at my door two or three days early, and my dad said, your mother woke up this morning, and she said, Sheila needs me, we need to go home. She was there for me in that dark hour. Her presence was a comfort I needed. My brother Paul expressed the caring aspect of mom's character in this way. Mom was great at turning earth-shattering into manageable. Notice she didn't take it away, but she helped you manage it. God can do that same thing for us. He wants to walk with us through the earth-shattering problems. He wants to provide us comfort and make it feel manageable. 2 Corinthians 13, uh, 1, 3 to 4 reminds us that God is not distant or apathetic to our suffering. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. He's not a spectator, but a loving and present God who understands our trials intimately. And in his great mercy, he invite, invites us to bring our pain to him, allow him to minister to our wounded hearts, he longs to gather us in his arms and whisper words of comfort and restoration, for he is the God of comfort. 
This verse also reminds us that God's comfort to us is not solely for our benefit. God's healing touch is meant to equip us with a unique and powerful ministry. As we receive his comfort, he empowers us to extend comfort to others who are walking through their own seasons of pain and suffering. Our wounds become the very source of our empathy and understanding, enabling us to be vessels of God's love and healing to those around us. It's in our weakness that God's strength is made perfect. Excuse me. It's reminding me I need water. When we feel broken and shattered, we must remember that God's grace is more than sufficient to sustain us. He'll never abandon us in our distress, but will pour out his abundant love and grace upon us, providing the strength we need to endure and the hope we need to persevere. He then enables us to provide that same comforting love to each other and those in our community. Yes, the symbolism Symbolism of a mother's love throughout the Bible serves as a powerful reminder of God's deep affection for his children. It illustrates a profound emotional and spiritual bond that exists between God and his people and highlights his desire to bring comfort, healing, and restoration. Just as a mother's love provides a safe haven for her child, allowing them to find rest and security, so too God's love offers us refuge and peace. In times of sorrow, pain, or uncertainty, we can find comfort in knowing God's love is a constant presence that brings hope and it brings healing. As we reflect on the comforting love of a mother, we can't forget the infinite and enduring love of God. May we find solace in his embrace and allow his comforting love to heal and restore us. Sacrificial love. When I think of sacrificial love of a mother, I'm drawn to the example of Mary. And if you were here on Tuesday evening, um, you would have had an idea of what this is about. In Luke 1, the angel Gabriel came to a young, unmarried woman named Mary to tell her that God had chosen her to be the mother of his son, the savior of the world. Mary knew that it was a great sacrifice on her, her part. She was going to face ridicule, she could have faced death because unmarried women pregnant at that time could be stoned. She knew that if she agreed that she was going to face difficulty, but her faith in God and her love for God enabled her to reply this way, I am the Lord's servant. May your words be to me be fulfilled. Mary went on to love teach and train and nurture this son. But another example of Mary's sacrificial love is shown in John 19, 25 to 27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here's your son. And to the disciple, here's your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Now, that passage highlights to me the sacrificial love of Mary, who stood by Jesus during the worst time of his life, his crucifixion. The passage highlights the strength and the sacrifice inherent in a mother's love. As Mary's witnessed her son's suffering and imminent death on the cross, she showed unwavering devotion and selflessness. She stayed there through it. She remained steadfast by his side, providing comfort in his darkest hour. Even in his last moments, Jesus expressed concern for his mother, underscoring the importance of caring for one another, a core principle rooted in his mother's love. In this moment, Jesus entrusted the care of his mother to the disciple whom he loved further emphasizing the importance of family bonds and the responsibility of caring for one another. Mary's sacrificial love for Jesus is a powerful testament of the incredible lengths a mother will go to protect and support her child, even in the face of unimaginable pain and loss. 
It serves as a reminder of the sacrificial love that mothers demonstrate for their children, a love that transcends boundaries and encompasses a willingness to put their own needs aside for the sake of their child. Mary's sacrifice echoes the sacrificial love of Jesus himself, who willingly gave his life for the forgiveness of our sins. It illustrates the depth and breadth of a mother's love, reflecting the divine love of God. Through her incredible act of selflessness, Mary exemplifies the enduring and sacrificial nature of maternal love, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of believers throughout eternity. Mothers today offer sacrificial love to their children. In the face of adversity and challenging circumstances, a mother's love shines bright, whether it's making personal sacrifices, providing unwavering support, or being a source of comfort and strength. A mother's love is a testament of the power of selflessness and sacrifice. In the Sacrificial love of mother is exemplified by Mary, as I said earlier. As her son was crucified, she was an inspiration to us to cherish and honor the immense love and devotion that mothers pour into the lives of their children. My mother and many of your mothers offered sacrificial life, love. They sacrificed time, energy, money, and I'm sure peace of mind to ensure the needs, our needs were met. My mother made sure that we were loved, fed, clothed, and comfortable. I remember Dad having to ask Sue to help Mom, him get a winter coat for Mom because Mom was so focused on clothing us properly that she wouldn't go out and buy a new coat for herself. <clears throat> Dad and my father took on extra jobs and everything so that he could provide money to make sure that we could have the things that we needed but also look to our future. And Jesus is our best example, though, of the sacrificial love. John 3.16 says, at first John 3.16 says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. The next love I saw in that passage is nurturing love. In Proverbs 31.26-28 says this, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. This passage celebrates the nurturing aspect of a mother's love. And this proverb emphasizes not only the physical well-being of her family, but also the moral and spiritual guidance she provides. A mother's nurturing love encompasses various strengths that contribute to the holistic growth of her children and the well-being of her family. By providing physical, moral, and spiritual guidance and setting expectations for them and helping them to set expectations for themselves, she shapes her character. Um, and in their important values. My brother Murray said, setting expectation is part of nurturing. And our mother set expectations for us. One of the key ingredients to success is setting reasonable expectations. Continued learning and education, honesty, empathy, and politeness were expectations my parents had of them, us. They have impacted us even in our adult lives. Proverbs 31 highlights the wisdom and kindness that flows from a mother, a mother's tongue, as well as her pro proactive role in caring for her household. The verse emphasizes the impact of a mother's nurturing love on her children. A mother attends to the physical well-being of her family, ensuring their health and safety. She provides moral guidance by teaching values and instilling principles in their lives. She offers spiritual guidance by fostering faith and spirituality. She shows her knowledge, shares her knowledge and insights to support her children in attaining wisdom. How many times do I think back to what my mother said or my father said or my grandmother or my aunt and use that same wisdom today? A mother's wisdom and kindness creates a nurturing environment where her children can thrive. Additionally, additionally her proactive care for the household ensures harmonious and supportive atmosphere. Overall, a mother's nurturing love has a profound 
and lasting impact on her loved ones. God provides us with nurturing love. We experience the mothering side of God. As El Shaddai, he sustains us and nurtures us as his children. He protects, he guards, and he delights in us. While we were yet sinners, Jesus laid down his life for us. We've been nurtured in God's word at PABC. Throughout the ages, church members and pastors have provided nurturing and teaching. The question I ask is, how are we continuing the nurturing in our church family today? What is our part? Another type of love I saw in this one was protective love. And Exodus 2.3 is the best example for that. In, Bible time, in the Bible, there are numerous examples of a mother's love. But I think this one vividly portrays a protective love. The passage narrates the courage of Moses' mother, who concealed him to safeguard his life, despite the imminent danger and the cruel decree of Pharaoh to kill all Hebrew baby boys. This mother's instinct to shield her child prevailed. And listen to what it says. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papaya's basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she child, placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. And we know the story of, a, of a Pharaoh's, daughter, Pharaoh's daughter coming, taking him, and bringing him up. In this heart-wrenching moment, we witness the strength and the determination of a mother who defies all odds to protect her child. It showcases a love that's selfless, fierce, and unwavering. This act of protective love is a testament to the extraordinary lengths a mother would go to ensure the safety and well-being of her, of her beloved child. And we know that Moses played a, a major part in the lives of all of the Israelites. The story of Moses rem reminds us of the incredible power of a mother's love. It uh, demonstrates that in the face of adversity, a mother's instinct to guard her child is an unbreakable force. This protective love is a reflection of the deep bond between a mother and her offspring, transpiring, extending all barriers and obstacles. Through this biblical account, we see that protective love is an inherent characteristic of motherhood. Mothers and fathers instinctively shield their children from harm, provide a nurturing and secure environment. It's a love that serves as a shelter, guiding and equipping children to navigate the challenges of life. The story of Moses' mother not only highlights that powerful bond between mother and child, but it re really unveils that profound depth of a mother's protective call, love. It captures the essence of maternal instinct found only in a mother's heart. And I was thinking of as that as I was uh, doing this research, I thought, my mom displayed her protective love for us as well. I think of one year, the year that my sister Anne was born in December 22nd, um, that fall, we were young, but we wanted, all wanted to go to the potato field, and my mother didn't feel that was a safe place to be. So you know what she did? She went to the potato field and picked potatoes with us so she could ensure that we were safe. My dad took vacation from customs, and what did he do? He drove the truck for the, the farmer, and he took my younger brother Paul, who was too little to help us pick, in the truck with him. He could keep watch on us in the field as well. She and my father surrounded us by protective love. And God, God's protective love for us is it's there as well. God's presence protects us even when we can't feel his presence. We know that God is omnipresent. We never face frightening situations alone. God faces it with us. Hebrews 13, 5b, God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. God's peace protects us. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, with transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. God's love also protects our mental health. With a focus on God's love, we can gain a better perspective of the trials in our world. Colossians 3.2 tells us to set your ma minds on things above, not on earthly things. Ephesians 1 provides a list describing how God sees us through his eyes of love. In that chapter, he assures us that we're loved, 
We're accepted, we're forgiven, we're adopted heirs, and we're chosen by him. Another uh, love that parents do is a teaching love. I want to share today that teaching love. Children need to be taught. Many parents over the last few years, since uh, 2020, have experienced the need to teach their children. Some chose homeschooling, while others actively engage in homework and support to help their child learn. Sometimes this can be frustrating for the parents, but because we love the child and want what's best for them, we work with them and encourage them to do their best work. My favorite memory of homework was as I was growing up, Ma was my mother trying to help my brother Bill spell. My brother Bill still cannot spell. He's an engineer, he still cannot spell. Mum was sometimes close to tears as she tried to prepare him for his weekly spelling test. I'm not sure if this story fits under teaching love, or sacrificial love, unconditional love, or enduring love. But whatever it was, she provided that. Now, I used to, every once in a while, slip under the table, even though I was a couple years younger than him, I was much better at spelling, even when I was in grade one. So I used to try to slip under the table before she got there and whisper some spelling to him. And it probably didn't help him much with his spelling test, but anyway. But spell check and a good executive assistant has made his life great now. He still does not spell. We see the teaching love in 2 Timothy 1.5. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. The verse highlights the profound impact of mother's love through the teachings of faith and values. And this verse specifically mentions the sincere faith of Timothy's grandmother Lois and his mother, highlighting the influential roles mothers play in shaping their child's character and faith. The enduring legacy of a mother's love is emphasized, demonstrating the importance of passing down the values and beliefs from one generation to the next. I had the privilege of grandmothers, a grandmother's love and, and value helping me. My grandmother, Jamer, lived right across the road, and I got a lot of uh, things from her. I had great aunts, my dad's two sisters, and um, Mary and Deanna, and my mom's sisters, Blanche and Edith and Eva, they parted, imparted wisdom, and they instilled moral principles and nurturing and spiritual growth for me. So through their teaching, mothers empower their children to navigate life's challenges and to make choices rooted in love, compassion, and faith. But notice also that fathers and grandfathers are not exempted from the responsibility to teach their children. In Proverbs 23, 22 to 25, listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Wisdom, instruction, and insight, insight as well. The father of a righteous child has great joy. A man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice May she who gave you birth be joyful. When your child or grandchild attends to you, your teaching, it brings you joy. Can you imagine how much joy we bring to God's heart when we listen to his teaching and we share that teaching with the next generation? They too can instruct further generations. This is our mission as a church, to follow Jesus, learn from him, and teach Jesus and his love to the next generations. And the last one I want to point out is that enduring love. In Proverbs 31, 25, we find a profound depiction of a mother's enduring and resilient love. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She has a, can laugh at the days to come. Why? It captures a mother's ability to face the future with unwavering strength, dignity, and a positive outlook, regardless of the challenges that may arise. It speaks of that spirit of a mother's love, which remains steadfast through the trials and tribulations of life. A mother's enduring life, love, is like a beacon of hope, bringing unwavering joy and comfort to those fortunate enough to receive it. It's a love that transcends time 
and distance, persisting through the ups and downs of life's journey. It's a love that teaches us resilience, perseverance, and the power of unconditional care, love. As we reflect on Proverbs 31, 25, we are reminded to cherish and honor the enduring nature of a paternal, maternal, and paternal love. It's a love that shapes us, guides us, and instills in us the values and virtues that endure throughout the generations. Psalm 136, 1 reminds us that God's love is enduring. Give thanks to the Lord, for his, he is good. His love endures forever. King Darius made this statement in Daniel 6, 26 and 27. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and, re and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. This God of Daniel's is the same God we serve today. I've shared the Bible's picture of God's love through the concept of a mother's love. A mother's love reflects God's love for his children and is a powerful force in shaping lives. We need to celebrate the enduring love of mothers, fathers, grandparents, and others. We need to recognize the impact they've had on our lives and the world around us. May we at PABC follow Jesus through studying and learning God's word, caring for each other by teaching and helping others to grow in their faith and serving our community in love and unity. May others who see, see our love for God and experience our love for them. May it be true that, PABC's, that at PABC, God's love is a fuel that an orb enables a normal human being to do the impossible. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13 says, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. May we love with that same faith and hope. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for the mothers, for the fathers, for the grandparents, aunts and uncles, siblings that you send into our lives to provide that love for us. Thank you for your unwavering love. And we pray, Lord, that as we continue on in our ministry here on earth, that we would share that love with those around us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we all head back out into our lives, let's stand together and we're going to sing the blessing over all of you as you head back out, but especially a special blessing for all of our mothers um, as they head out to do the important job of loving our children.
as we usually do. I'm going to try to adjust this a little bit. As we usually do at this point in the service, I want to invite you all to read uh, the Apostles' Creed with me. It's on the back of the uh, screen, so I'm going to try to do this, but you're probably not going to hear me very well, so just go with it anyway. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand. Amen. 